Stafford from under center. Opens up Gibbs. Michelle over the left side, driving the pile, looking for the goal line. He's got it. Touchdown, Sonny Michelle. Touchdown, L.A. Two possessions, two scores for L.A. as the takeaway turns into a potential double-digit lead for the Rams here in Week 13. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Rams Revealed. I'm your host, J.B. Long. The Rams open the month of December with a physical, dominant win over the Jacksonville Jaguars. Up next, a trip to the desert to take on the team with the best record in the National Football League, the Arizona Cardinals, on Monday Night Football. And our guest is Sony Michelle. After putting together the first 100-yard rushing game of the season for the 2021 Rams, uh, Sony, welcome. Thank you for spending part of your Monday with us. Thanks for having me. So when you see a game plan come together last week, like the one you just put on display against the Jags, I'm talking about six linemen, three tight ends sometimes, the jumbo packages. What's your thought process? What's that like? Uh, just lets me know it's going to be a physical game. Uh, we're going to try to run the ball, get downhill, um, you know, and basically just try to get some yards on the ground. Well, that's exactly what played out. More blockers naturally means heavier boxes, right? And there are some backs that prefer lighter boxes. Say, hey, spread it out. Let's go out of 11. Let me find some daylight. You seem to be at the other end of the spectrum. You seem to thrive on congestion and traffic. Is that true? Do you like running out of heavier sets? Um, and Not necessarily. I don't really have a preference. I mean, obviously, any running back would want to run with a lighter box. But, I mean, if they stack the box, that's a good thing. I mean... You've done sure. something right. What is it like from your vantage point behind Matthew Stafford, let's just say, when you are looking across the scrimmage and you've got seven, eight Jaguars to contend with? Um, I mean, just knowing that whatever play was called, I'm sure it was, you know, the right play call. You know, I have so much trust in, you know, Coach McVay, mm -hmm. um, Matthew Stafford, you know, making the right checks, making the right mic points. So really for me, it's more me being at ease knowing – this is the perfect play for that defense. So I really have no worries. Right. Can you feel your impact over the course of four quarters? And when I say your impact, of course, that's inclusive. It means your offensive line. It means your tight ends, your receivers who are paving the way for you. When you're hammering away over the course of a game like that, trying to break an opponent's will, is, th is that a real dynamic that you can sense between the lines? Uh, definitely. Um, in this league, you want to try to, the whole goal is to run the football and on defense is to stop the run. Mm -hmm. And when the team is, you know, struggling to stop the run, eventually you're going to break their will as long as you just keep pounding. And I think that's what we did. Take us to the uh, Sony Michelle School of Yards After Contact. If you had to teach your philosophy on breaking tackles, on getting the extra yards, where does it start? Um, it starts with Coach Thomas Brown kind of emphasizing so much of pad level, um, you know, just limiting the surface that these guys, the defenders are hitting. Uh, pad level, driving through contact. I know a lot of people try to say, you know, defenders are supposed to be the, the, the physical ones, but as running backs, we try to, we like to be the physical ones. We like to deliver the bro. So we're trying to run through contact and just keep your feet moving. Hmm. I want to circle back to Coach Brown because I know there's a connection with uh, your Georgia history and the role that he's played here with the Rams and I'm interested about his future too but let me just uh, finish off last week's game with you know that was the most carries I think since your rookie season you had one early on in your tenure at the Patriots against the Dolphins where you had 25 touches how'd you come out physically how does it feel the day after a workload like that um you know not too bad yeah I um, thought I'd been worse, but I'm, I'm not too bad. I've had worse days. And then in terms of your background, I'm going to jump around here just a little bit. You have an older brother on the Washington football team. Yes. He's a receiver. Is it Markin? Markin, yeah. They're playing well. NFC wild card position. Mm. Um, true or false? You and your brother began your careers as offensive linemen, I read. That's true. What? Where does that, uh, where does that story start? Um. Long story short, we first year ever playing football, we thought we were better than what we were, like most people. <laughs> um, we went out there, we was in for a rude awakening, and the coach was like, all right, y'all big, so we're just going to put y'all on the offensive line. Not necessarily big as in fat. It was just more, we were kind of taller, just bigger than some of the kids, mm -hmm. so, and not as skilled. So he's like, all right, we're going to put you guys on the offensive line. Um, I do have appreciation for the position. Um, especially because now that I'm a running back, sure. I, I lean on the offensive lineman, but I hated it. You hated it then? Yeah. And you made your way to running back. He 
uh, made his way to wide receiver wide and receiver. his path has wound from college to Canada and now back to the league. Mm -hmm. That's tremendous. And you have an older sister as well? Yes. Okay. Uh, have you ever met another Sony? I actually have. I met another Sony. He was, I was at this banquet and he was like a bartender hmm. with the nameplate Sony. And I was kind of, but he was Haitian too. So I was like, maybe there's a lot of Haitian Sony. Sure. I love unique names, um, and I'm always curious if you've ever encountered another one. So let's get into your, your Haitian background, and I'll introduce it this way since it's topical. You and you know 30 plus other Rams uh, over the weekend were part of the My Cause, My Cleats campaign. Um, on your cleats was an organization called Be Like Brit. Uh, Brittany Gengel, apologize if I'm uh, mispronouncing that name, um, is the honorary there. She was a 19-year-old college student serving in Haiti uh, and lost her life to the 2010 earthquake. Do I have that correct? Yes. And now in her memory, this organization has built a facility with the goal of, quote, raising the next generation of leaders in Haiti. How did you come in contact with that organization and why um, are they now a cause that you support? Um, they've obviously come into the NFL and having the opportunity to have mm -hmm. this platform um, I've always wanted to do something in Haiti. Um, didn't know where to start and didn't know what organization to kind of reach out to. But Be Like Brick, also, uh, they actually reached out to me. Hmm. They um, they would like pop up at my appearances. Like they would like, you know, DM me, message me and just trying to find ways to get in contact with me. Then finally um, they did. And I thought it was interesting. And um, anything doing with the future, the youth, the kids, um, I'm a big supporter of because I believe in, in, in building and, mm. you know, trying to pour into the younger generation. And so do I have it correct? The connection there with your background is your parents emigrated from Haiti. Yes. Both parents immigrated from Haiti. Um, and you know, especially with their story of, you know, just leaving everything behind, kind of building a life here, sacrificing so much just so I can get an opportunity to be where I am today. Um, you know, you never know, uh, when I can do things like this to shed light on those kids over there, maybe, you know, something can happen. Sure. No, especially coming off of this summer where another 7.2 magnitude earthquake rocked that, uh, that nation. So once again, Be Like Brit is the name of the organization for those of you who would like to check it out and learn a bit more. Um, so your parents come to the States, you end up going from Florida to Georgia to play your college football. And I'd love to talk some coaching here with you and we'll get to Thomas Brown as well. You had Mark Rick to start, right? Yes. Kirby Smart, uh, yes. then Bill Belichick, Sean McVay. Big picture from your standpoint, because those personalities are all very accomplished, but also quite different. Mm -hmm. What makes a good coach for you as a player? Um, for me, oh, a good coach, I would say um, accountability. And all those coaches have that same uniqueness in them. Like, for some reason, I always felt like each and every one of those coaches kind of held me to a standard that I always thought was like, dang, why are they being so hard on me? Hmm. Or, Hmm. Maybe they may see something or want me to bring something out of me that I just got to show more. But, um, you know, all, all the coaches kind of had that kind of mindset. So there's a, a similarity between Bill Belichick and Sean McVay. Now that you spent a good portion <laughs> of a season with Sean, how about a difference or two? Uh, difference, obviously two different coaches, two different uh, mindsets, two different energies, personalities. Um, and they're both great, great people. Um, you know, Sean McVay, he's, he's, he's a good person to be around, um, especially in meetings, you know, just kind of making things interesting, kind of keeping guys engaged um, in different ways. Especially over the course of now a 17 game season plus off season program, preseason, hopefully playoffs for you. Yeah. That's big to be able to stand in front of the room and captivate an audience that many times, that many weeks. Yeah, consistently. So that takes me to Thomas Brown. Uh, you have the college connection with him. It was one of the things we celebrated when you became a Ram. And around this building, he's seen as a rising star in the coaching profession. What do you think um, is unique about him as a position coach? And what might his future hold, given what you just described about coaches that you admire? Uh, you could throw him in that same category, accountability. Um, and at the end of the day, he hold all the running backs to a high standard. Um, and there's no excuses. Hmm. Um, he's going to coach you hard. He's going to coach you. He's going to be there for you. 
Um, he's he gonna be a friend that you need to lean on. He's gonna be a coach that you need to lean on, and he's also someone you can go and just talk to. Um, and I think you know he does a great job at what he do. Hmm. Well, it's been great seeing your work up up close. We obviously became exposed to it going all the way back to 2018, that remarkable rookie run you had through the postseason. What was it, six touchdowns? Six touchdowns. I wish it was five, man. (laughs) I really wish it was five. We could have done without that last one. But look, we've known each other for, uh, what, 10, 12 minutes now, so I feel comfortable asking, when you dream about Super Bowl 56 in Inglewood, is it the Patriots across the sideline from the AFC? Um ideally that'd be cool <laughs> they are the one seed right now right depending yeah, on how monday but, night football goes um as long as we're blessed as long as we work hard and mm-hmm. you know work our way towards those goals if we're in it i don't think it matters who's across and as you prepare for monday night football at arizona do you think the disposition that you and your group brought to sofi that identity that you found against the jacksonville jaguars travels and plays the rest of december and january I believe so. I think, you know, we, we were able to go out there, execute, um, and, and put some good plays together. And I, I hope we just be able to build on it. And mm-hmm. that's our goal. All right, let's finish with a segment we call Three and Out. Sony, uh, all your teammates before you have participated in this as well. Three final questions for you if you get the uh, answers correct. There aren't really any wrong answers. Don't worry. I will make a donation to the LA Rams <laughs> Foundation on your behalf. Okay, you ready? Yes. What are you planning to get Andrew Whitworth for his 40th birthday this weekend? Um, I'm probably going to get him some. Ooh, it's a good question. What does he like? He likes 100 yards rushing and at least one touchdown. Let's get him another just, 100 yards. Just a suggestion. All right. Second question. When UGA gets the rematch with Alabama in the national championship, what's the final score? The final score is going to be like 28-17 Georgia. All right. First, David Long's uh, Michigan Wolverines, right, in the Orange Bowl. And then lastly, uh, there was a uh, FBS record set by the Pony Express, uh, career rushing yards for a duo, Craig James and this Rams Hall of Fame running back, Eric Dickerson. It was an incredible accomplishment, over 8,000 between the two of them during their college careers. Who broke their record and how? Um, Nick Chubb and Sonny Michelle. And the last game as a Bulldog? In the national championship. Offensive MVP of the Rose Bowl, right? Yes, sir. Four touchdowns? Yes, sir. It was a precursor for what was to come in your history in Los Angeles. We're glad to have you. Appreciate it. Sony, thanks for your time. Enjoy your day off and a great week ahead Monday Night Football against the Arizona Cardinals. Thank you. All right, for Sony Michelle, I'm JB Long. This is Rams Revealed.